By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an old school magic battle between White Weenie and Underworld Dreams. My opponent is Pablo from Chile. He is bringing the White Weenie Brew to the table. It's a classic White Weenie Brew that I'm going to tell you all about in a minute or so. I am playing with a black and white Underworld Dreams deck. Now, before I go to the deck deck, if you like to go straight to the games, like always, you can find uh, a timestamp in the description below that will take you straight to the first game. And here we are going to continue with the deck deck. I'm going to start with telling you a little bit about my deck, the black and white Underworld Dreams deck. And I am playing with an Underworld Dreams deck. So this deck is based on the enchantment from Legends for 3 Black. It reads, Underworld Dreams does 1 damage to opponent for each card he or she draws. And I also have another win condition in this deck and that is Black Vice. So those two are the only two cards that I have in this deck that can actually deal damage to my opponent because I am not playing with any creatures. This deck is completely creatureless. Now the card in the middle you see here is the Howling Mine. Now, Howling Mine is really a no-brainer inclusion in my deck because Underworld Dreams deals damage to my opponent for every card that he or she draws. So with Howling Mine, they get an extra point of damage. Black Vice wants my opponent to have a lot of cards in hand because then it deals damage. It deals a damage for every card over four that my opponent has. So for me, Howling Mine is really um, like an auto include. It's really a no brainer. And then when we kind of dig further into the deck, we also have a card that I personally find very interesting and I'm really happy to play with this deck, uh, with this card. It is the Skull of Orm. Now, I remember when I saw this for the first time a long, long time ago, I was really, I thought this card was the greatest. Like a card that can bring in shamans back from the graveyard, sign me up. Now, when I started playing with the skull, I realized it had its limitations. It's the three to cast, which is kind of a reasonable casting cost, but the five to activate means that usually you can activate it and then you cannot play the enchantment out at the same time. Still, I think it's a very good inclusion in this deck because I am so reliant of Underworld Dreams. I just need a way to get it back from my graveyard. So that's why I'm playing with one Skull of Orm main in my deck. Now, I'm also playing with Spirit Link, the card that you see here on the right side, the enchantment from Legends, and I'm kind of and I'm using that to uh, neutralize the creatures of my opponent. Now remember, I'm playing creatureless, so I've decided to go for Spirit Link because there's some nice synergy with Skull of Orm, and I didn't want to actually go for Mace of If. Maybe Mace of If could be an option too, but with Mace of If, I lose a land drop, so I just decided to go for Spirit Link. I also thought about including Swords to Plowsiers. I've decided to put it in my sideboard because Swords to Plowsiers gives life to my opponent. That's not what I want to do with the Underworld Dreams because basically life in this case means cards, you know, because Underworld Dreams deals a damage for each card drawn. So I don't want to give my opponent that space to draw into like maybe a solution for my Underworld Dreams or Black Vice. And also I'm playing with Wrath of God. So I figured out if I play Spirit Links, then the creatures will kind of will kind of stick to the board and then at a certain point I will simply p p uh, play the Wrath and it'll wipe the board completely. I'm playing with two Wrath of God's main and one Wrath of God in my sideboard. Now, talking about uh, the sideboard, let's take a closer look because I have another really interesting card in the sideboard. So here we see the Swords to Plows here. So I've got three Swords to Plows here in my sideboard, but I'm also playing with two Island Sanctuary is in my sideboard and this again is a, um, an enchantment that I find really interesting. It's kind of a cheap mode. It's cheaper in casting cost and of course cheaper in price as well. And I mean it's beautiful Mark Pool art by the way, but let's just kind of zoom into the enchantment for the people that don't know. This is one white and one to cast and it reads, you may decline to draw a card from your library during your draw phase. In exchange, until the start of your next turn, the only creatures that may attack you are those that fly or have Island Walk. So this again is like a classical combination with Howling Mine. Howling Mine allows you to still draw, to draw an extra card and by declining one card, Island Sanctuary works. So instead of drawing two cards with Howling Mine, I only draw one card with Howling Mine. So that is pretty sweet and then I get the Island Sanctuary protection. So I'm really curious to find out how well Island Sanctuary 
will operate and I think this game against Pablo is perfect because it's probably going to come in from the sideboard and hopefully I get a chance to cast it and to kind of see this card in action because I was I was kind of in doubt you know should I play this island sanctuary should I play, put an extra shorts to plow seers and an extra wrath of god in my sideboard or maybe mazes of if but you know what I've chosen to go with island sanctuary it's beautiful art and against certain decks like like green but also this white weenie brew i'm playing against it should actually work pretty well so i'm really curious to see how that's going to end up okay so this is it for my deck and we are now going to zoom into pablo's white weenie deck let's go and here we see a few cards from the deck of pablo so like i said he's playing with your traditional white weenie so i'm expecting to see a lot of smaller creatures i believe he's got tundra wolves here we see the mesa pegasus that i believe he's playing main we've got savannah lines we've got sarah angel we also have white knight so we just have a lot of creatures and of course he's playing with crusade so he just wants to play a shitload of creatures pardon my french and um, then he just wants to pump them with crusade and kind of take it from there really your classical approach and um, let's take a look at some more cards in this deck because he's also included uh, Lantex here in Armageddon it's, it's a very classical combination for people that don't know Lantex is one YT casting enchantment reprinted in fourth edition which makes it kind of affordable and it reads during your upkeep if an opponent controls more land than you you may sacrifice your library and remove up to three basic land cards and put them into your hand reshuffle your library afterwards so in other words he can cast an armageddon in his turn when he has more creatures on the board than me well i'm playing creatureless so that's not really going to be a problem for him then it's my turn i will kind of be forced to play out of land if i have one and then next turn pablo's land text will trigger and he can look up for more lands another great thing about this is he wants to draw in gas he wants to draw creatures 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 maybe a crusade here and there and just put a lot of pressure on the board and land text helps him to kind of filter his deck from lands that he doesn't really need anyway so land text armageddon is always a great addition to any white weenie or also pink weenie strategies for that matter now the card in the center here that you see is a disenchant i've put it here because i think disenchant can play a very big role remember i am playing with a creatureless underworld dreams deck so i need underworld dreams howling mine and black vice to win games and if he can find disenchants and just neutralizes the vices and the underworld dreams then i mean the game is probably going to be his so it's going to be really interesting to see how that will turn out so this is kind of in a nutshell the deck of pablo let's quickly go to the games and find out how this matchup is going to end up game number one and i'm sitting on the left of course with the timmy playmat and my opponent pablo here sitting on the right look at his playmat by the way it's it's really cool you've got there it says fighty plays the dudes and then we've got lance and junk and also the graveyard referred to as dead stuff really really dead stuff that must be the uh the exile pile i i like it i really like it and let's see starting here with the basic planes into soul ring oh look at this what an opening my goodness pablo is going to take six here double vice that means he's going to drop to 14 and we haven't even started yet what an opening from my side here let's see what pablo can do probably going to dump some creatures but i mean a savannah lines is, is it's a good opening but that means he's still going to take four more damage next turn oh look at this double howling mine turn number two this is crazy did i did i put the cards did i put them in order or something this is ridiculous this like never happens but of course it's great for me pablo taking even more damage going to 10 I'm kind of feeling bad here because I'm not really giving him a chance to to play out any cards. Um, and going here to 18 and there is a double Tundra Wolves. So he is able to put something on the board, but is it going to be enough? Remember, he's drawing three cards every turn. That means that next turn he's taking even more damage. Taking a damage here and showing here my uh, my city of brass a world championship I really like that golden border by the way, but okay. That's another discussion. I guess there's a demonic tutor and I'm gonna Dive into my deck here trying to find some more what am I going to look for another vice? Maybe something to get rid of those creatures perhaps Another Howling Mine? That could be an option. Oh, another Howling Mine, I guess. Look at that. That means that Pablo will draw into four cards. 
First he has to take the damage, taking four damage. That means he was in six cards. So he's dropping to six life as well. Now he's drawing four extra cards. That means he's got 10 cards in hand. Playing a soul ring, at least that's something. What can he do here? I mean, this looks like a first game for me. I mean, there's really not much. He needs a double disenchant. That would kind of save him. Maybe he draw, drew into them with all those Howling Mines. At least one disenchant then. Take care of the vice. That will give him an extra turn. Okay, it's not it's not a bad card, but it's not a good card right now because it's not going to help him survive. I'm dropping to 10 here, by the way. So Pablo is actually able to deal a lot of damage. But... I mean, those Vices and Howling Mines are just a complete killer. And I wonder if I can find some creature removal. And there is a Sinkle. Not really going to do anything here, but at least it's going to prevent him from casting a Sarah Angel. Although I don't really think that's relevant anymore because I believe he's going to die next turn. I think he's got 7 in hand. Maybe, maybe 6 in hand? Let's see. And that's it. Exactly 7 in hand. So he's taking... Six more damage and wow, this was a quick and ridiculous game number one. I'm really sorry, Pablo. Uh, let's go to our sideboards and we'll catch up with you in game number two. Game number two is about to start. And I mean, I think Pablo, the chances of me again having such a ridiculous opening like game one, uh, game turn one, I mean, double vice, uh, turn two, double howling mine. That is very, very slim, close to none actually. So let's take a look here. Pablo's starting. He has mulled down to five cards, by the way. And look at that again, a very good opening for me here. Dark Ritual into an Underworld Dreams. And I can tell you that I've boarded in the Swords to Plowsiers and the extra Wrath of God. It's kind of a no-brainer against such a creature heavy deck. There we see a Crusade. That means three damage to me, dropping down to 17. And let's see if I can find some of that creature removal. I do think it's uh, it's important right now. Don't seem to have anything. Perhaps a sword stand? Tapping to, there is a disenchant, so at least that's gonna save me a damage. That means I'm gonna drop to 15. And Crusade being a very strong card in these white weenie decks. There is a Tundra Wolves hitting the board. And there is a Scrubland and casting a Skull of Orms. So a very cool card, but absolutely useless right now. No enchantments in the bin. And I don't even have five mana to activate it anyway. So it's it's quite useless. It's nice to play out something, but it also shows that I don't have any sorts to Plowseers or probably not even a Disenchant for that matter in hand. Or else I would have kept a, a, a Disenchant to deal with a possible crusade as we see right now. That means that Pablo is going for five damage, dropping to 10. I need something here. A Wrath would be perfect, but I'm just passing turn. Things are looking bad for me here. And remember, Pablo started with five cards and he still has the upper hand. There is a land tax. He can even use the land tax. Again, another disenchant. That means crusade's gone. Still gonna take three damage, dropping to seven here. That means I'm on a two turn clock. And Pablo can start activating that land tax. Look at that. I'm playing a land, quickly taking it back because of that land tax. And Pablo's actually not using the land tax here. I'm not really sure why. I guess he just forgot. And look at his hand. Only has two cards in hand. But, I mean, he's got creatures. I have no creature removal. And that will eventually give him the victory. Attacking here, dropping to four. That means that after this turn, I only have one more turn to kind of find answers here. I do have tons of removal in my deck right now. I just don't seem to be able to find it. And this kind of shows how important also Black Vice is for my deck because Black Vice really helps me. Or I mean, uh, Howling Mine, sorry. Howling Mine really helps me. And this is interesting. We had a little uh, discussion here where Pablo asked, am I not taking any damage uh, from the land tax and actually no you are not because you're not drawing these cards You're looking them up and putting them into your hand. It's something else than drawing So when you have land tax and underworld dreams those two don't work together or you could say they do work together because Land tax doesn't deal any uh, does, Doesn't trigger underworld dreams. So let's see what's gonna happen here. Oh an Armageddon I, this is a great play from Pablo and I mean, how can I survive this? I'm on one measly life and now I find a spirit link. Of course, when you're already dead, but um, 
Pablo, I have to give it to you. Well played, sir. You started with five cards and you're still winning here. He's going to activate the Lantex. I don't think you, you know, I mean, you can do that, but I'm, I'm pretty much dead on board. I am tapped out. Uh, I'm on one life and I believe you've got a Tundra Wolf that has no Spirit Link. And he can even kill me with the Zavanna Alliance because with Spirit Link, you first take the damage and then you get the life. Um, so look at this, killing me here with the Tundra Wolves. That means I am on zero uh, and that means one, one. So we are going to go to game number three. Let's hope that I can find something in game three. Exciting stuff here. So let's take another look at our sideboards and then we'll catch up with you in game number three. Game number one. I'm on the play again. Look at that again, advice. I have to say I cannot complain about my opening turns. I mean, double vice game one, underworld dreams turn one, game two, and now a vice turn one. So I, I really can't can complain, but I do think black vices are of course not great against the white weenie deck. Anyway, and, and no follow-up play here for me. I needed a, a Howling Mine or something. It's just not happening. Finding a second plane's passing turn here. And we've got the Tundra Wolves from Pablo. So dropping to 19 and he's gonna cast a White Knight. So, I mean, Pablo is doing what he's supposed to do with his deck. Now let's see what I can what I can do. Probably casting the Spirit Link on his White Knight. So that's pretty good for me, at least finding something and casting that Scrubland passing turn here. And Pablo dropping to 14 already, taking damage from the Vice. And uh, attacking here. So I'm going to drop to 18. He's probably going to cast some more creatures. No, a Felver Stone actually. And finding another Tundra Wolf. So more pressure here on the board from Pablo. That's what he wants to do. And okay, here we see an Underworld Dreams. Not too shabby and maybe some creature removal although i'm not sure what's costing too white to cast a disenchant perhaps maybe i'm thinking about the disenchant because i'm a little bit afraid of a sarah angel then again i probably decide not to because he's still on three uh, mana and i want to keep my disenchant for the crusades who are really really a problem for me so attacking with two here i'm going to drop to 16 but pablo is also taking damage and there is a mesa pegasus the 1-1 one, one Banding Flyer. And ooh, look at this, another Underworld Dreams. What I just need are a couple of Swords to Plowsiers to kind of deal with those creatures once and for all. Maybe finding another land and casting a Wrath, that would also be perfect. I mean, he's dropping to 11 now. Remember, he's taking two damage per drawn card because of the double Underworld Dreams. I'm not quite sure how much cards he has on hand it's hard to see he's going to hit me for three first i'm going to drop to 13 here i believe he's got is that six cards five or six cards oh, let's see there's counting his cards again i believe there are six cards in yeah six cards in hand and there is a land text and he can actually activate that next turn but there is a disenchant on the text then again with the vice and there's a howling mine okay so this is good news for me the problem again is the same problem that i had in game number two and that is creature removal i mean i'm playing against a creature heavy deck i need my creature removal one spirit link is not going to cut it although he is taking a lot of damage now and i'm hoping that's why you see my fingers crossed there that he's not finding a crusade because that would be pretty crucial here then he can hit me for six remember with the spirit link damage goes first and then life so he can actually kill me before i can get life so that's another problem for me and oh this is oh man a dust to dust this is a big problem and i'm actually showing him another card where i'm saying this would be very useful against you a festival for the people that don't know the cards an instant from the dark. I'm not playing with it in this deck, by the way. There is another Underworld Dreams. My hand is empty. And okay, this is going to be very close. He's gonna take three damage. He's gonna to go to four. So at least that's something. I think that Dust to Dust was very crucial. Coming in from the sideboard, probably. A very good inclusion from Pablo here. First, he's gonna attack. I'm gonna to drop to seven. If he cannot play a creature, at least I have another turn after this. Aye, Sarah Angel. That means I'm dead. Can I find a balance? That would be a perfect answer here. Pablo's gonna drop to one. 
I need one creature removal spell. Do I have a swords in my hand there? Only a swords can save me now because it's an instant. Please let it be a swords. There is a, oh, pretty cool card from the sideboard as well, a karma. But first, let's see if I can survive this attack. Can I find a swords here? Survive, take the victory. Oh, it's an ivory tower. Oh man, and look at that balance was just around the corner. And I think the story of this match is me not finding creature removal. And Pablo, you've shown perfectly the strength of these, these monocolor decks, these white weenie decks, and that is consistency, consistency, consistency. What you do is you play creatures and you turn them sideways and you can do that very, very, very effectively. And that is what is giving you the victory. And I guess I need to go back to the toolbox and see how can I incorporate more defenses against these weenie decks um, or was I simply unlucky? This happens sometimes that you just cannot find creature removal. I haven't seen a single source for me. And after game one, I actually boarded in three of them. But hey, that's Magic the Gathering. That can happen. Uh, well played, Pablo. Congratulations on the victory. Um, and if you're actually listening to this and you're also an old school player in Chile, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to hear from you. And um, yeah, maybe, maybe you know Pablo. Maybe you can play against him. He's a very... Relaxed, dude, I really enjoyed our matchup. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you wanna support Timmy Talks, uh, like always, you can like this video, leave a comment, share it on your socials. Let me know what you think of the two brews that you saw playing against each other. And if you have any questions about the cards or the plays, feel free to ask them. It's always nice if you add a timestamp because then I know what part of the game you are referring to. Um, you can also support Timmy Talks uh, financially, by the way, we have a Patreon, so there's probably a link popping up right now. Click on that and that will take you to Timmy Talks Patreon page. And uh, yeah, I would really appreciate it if you could come over and have a look and if you would consider donating to the channel because that really helps to keep everything afloat here. And if you love old school magic, if you like Timmy Talks, it's a way to show your appreciation and to sponsor the program. Um, talking about Patreon, let's go to our end scroll. Let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing, marvelous patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te samba gezien.